Good morning folks and welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. This is Old Car Auto Guy. I guess we're doing some garbage today. As you can see guys, this morning it is a frosty one. And yesterday was a bit of a whirlwind. Why? Well, because we made a couple of sales. So the 2013 Hyundai Santa Fe, the one that my wife and I took to Montreal, is gone. Didn't go too far though. My salesman Bill bought it. Why? Well, because yesterday he sold his car. You see, we had a couple coming in looking to buy a small car. They had a big 2015 GMC Sierra and this gentleman's wife thought it was too big for her to drive around as a daily driver, which in most cases I can see that. So they looked at the white Chevy Cruze that we just got in. We didn't have it quite ready for the lot so we weren't comfortable letting them take it for a test drive and all that stuff yet. So I told Bill, I said you were looking at getting rid of your car and upgrading so why don't you show them that he said okay why not so that's what they did and the problem was this is the truck that they had to trade that they still owed money on so in most cases that might be an issue but we have multiple resources that allow us to get potential trade-ins up on the auction block for other dealers to take a look at and that's exactly what we did so when we posted this 2015 GMC Sierra up on Wholesale Express we found a buyer so basically what happens is that buyer bids as much as he's willing to pay for that vehicle and we use that figure as our trading amount because quite frankly I don't want to be tying up close to $30,000 on one single vehicle. But somebody did and they put their best payment for or their best offer forward and we were able to put this deal together. So Bill's car sold and in turn he bought the Santa Fe. The customer bought Bill's car and traded in the 2015 GMC Sierra. So what's happened now is I have clicked the sell button on my Wholesale Express app and that means the 2015 will be getting picked up by a transport company and it will be on its way. So once again, that is one of the many ways that used car dealers and new car dealers can help with taking trade-ins on vehicles they either don't want or maybe like us, can't really afford. So it worked out this time once again, and it's worked in the past, and we'll continue using those options in the future. And once again, here is Bubbles sitting here. It is Tuesday, the 26th of March. The inspection runs out on Sunday, the last day of the month, on the 31st. And I'm really, to be honest with you, I'm really going to miss driving it. We've got a couple days left, and we're going to make the most of it. One thing that we can do here in New Brunswick is when you do get an inspection done on your vehicle, it can be rejected. That rejection sticker means you've got 14 days to get the repairs done or else the vehicle has to be parked. So the big question up in the air for most people is, am I allowed to drive my car in the meantime on a uh, rejection sticker? Well, again, some will say yes, some will say no. Some will say it's only there to get you from your house to the garage the day that you get those repairs done. But 
Around New Brunswick, there's a lot of people that drive around on inspection stickers for a lot longer than 14 days. So I think what we'll do is we will bring it in. We will do an official inspection on it. And uh, I might give myself a 14 day extension on this vehicle just because I do enjoy driving it so much, even though it is a POS. So at the end of every sale, we make sure that we get our customers, even if it is Bill, with his new car so that we can show it off to the world. Well, good morning, guys. It is Thursday, March the 28th. And today, well, today is going to be a little bit special, but with mixed emotions. You see, the leader of Canada, Justin Trudeau, is coming to St. Stephen. And as deputy mayor, I've been invited to take part in the visitation and see what uh, this big announcement's gonna be about. The reason why it's mixed emotions is simply this. I don't like Justin Trudeau. I don't, I'm not a liberal. I, I didn't vote for the Liberal Party. Have I never voted for the Liberal Party? But yet, here I am being invited to go to this announcement. And one of the things that makes it a mixed emotion is because although I'm not really political, granted, I do take part in small town politics, I do find myself in a position where I 100% respect the office of the Prime Minister. No different than any of you guys in the states who are watching this should be respecting the office of the President. Regardless of who sits there, he's there for a reason. Because the system put him there. Maybe you didn't vote for him. Maybe you didn't agree with his tactics. Maybe you don't like him as a person. Regardless. When, you, uh, when you're in that position, when, when you get the invite to meet the leader of your country, you don't turn it down. So again, regardless of whether you like the person or you don't, regardless of whether you voted for the person or you didn't, it doesn't matter. Take pride in the fact that this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, regardless of who's sitting in the big chair, that you get to go there. I'm trying not to be political with this, but nevertheless, all I'm trying to say is, Respect the office, respect that position. You don't have to like the guy that's in it or the gal, whoever it is. Just, you know, it's a big thing. So I am dressed a little differently today. I'm not in my work clothes because I uh, am going to this event and I will be bringing my camera. Hopefully they let us in. So if they let us in with the camera, stay tuned. If they don't, well, this is the end of the video and I'll close it out shortly. The parking lot is packed. I asked if I could, he said yes. So without further ado, let's give our Prime Minister a warm maritime welcome so the Great Honourable Justin Trudeau. Thank you all for welcoming me here. I really appreciate the opportunity to come uh, and chat with you all. And don't worry, I'm not just going to give a speech. I'm looking forward to coming around and saying hi to everyone. Uh, and really looking forward to seeing you. And I, and I heard that it's someone's birthday today. Marjorie. That was a once in a lifetime opportunity and uh, I'm glad that I took the time off of work to uh, go do that and uh, make sure that uh, you know I, mean, I at least got to shake his hand 
and uh, barely an introduction. So anyways, as we move forward, like I said, once in a lifetime opportunity, this place is swarming with people. One thing you've got to remember about our location is over there is the United States, which means up there, they've got snipers. Yes, snipers. I saw them. Every entrance and exit into and out of this compound has an RCMP car. So the police are in high alert. Um, you were lucky if you wanted to go to the bathroom, you basically had to ask permission, just like in elementary school. So anyways, we're gonna tail her out of here and uh, head back to work. Well guys, that's gonna end another video. However, I wanna leave you with this. The 2013 Mazda 6. Remember the one with only 50K on it, all leathered up V6? This one right here. Well, when we first got the car back from the auction, we noticed that there was something wrong with the key fobs. These key fobs in this car are the keyless entry for a push start. So there's no real key per se, you just walk up to the car, press the little button on the door handle and it unlocks for you. Anyways, that wasn't working. We had two remotes though, but what we come to find out was that it had to go to the Mazda dealer in St. John to see if they could reprogram them. We sent it up, long story short, they couldn't do anything for us that day. I had paid a driver to go up. They had kept the driver there for four hours got them in two hours late for their appointment and we had to take the car back a second time however the second time I left it with them until they could determine what the problem was so I've got tied up now three drivers so I have to pay them the gas to get it there and I'm expecting to get a bill for an hour's labor, maybe a couple hours labor, but what has happened is the technicians didn't know what was going on, so they were on the phone with Mazda Canada, trying to determine what the issue was, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, they finally determined what's wrong with the vehicle. So they tell me the module that receives the information from those keys is bad. And the module is 15 hundred dollars go figure so then they tell me it's going to be another 350 to 400 bucks to install it and i'm like, okay no i'm not spending that money on this particular vehicle we're going to have to find another solution then they proceed to tell me well what you owe us right now is almost 700 dollars well guess what their labor rate is like hundred and thirty five dollars an hour and I just about fell out of my chair so when I asked them if there was anything they could do to help me out a little bit I mean the trouble that they were having I shouldn't be paying for their education I pay for them to know what they're doing anyways I write it, uh, an email to the service manager and I copy in the general manager of this Mazda dealer and well I asked for help I explained the situation I told them at no point in time or did anybody ever tell me that it was going to cost me more money to keep diagnosing. Again, I was willing to pay the first hour, maybe a little bit more, but at the end of the day, they didn't tell me anything. And then to give me a bill for 700 bucks and the thing's not fixed, I wasn't going for that. So I get a call back and once again, long story short with that deal is they cut my bill quite a bit. They understood that the way it was handled was wrong and that I should have been not notified and that they completely understood. And I wasn't a jerk about the whole thing and they were very pleasant to deal with. And I appreciate everything that that dealer was able to do for me because you know they're in the business too. And I'm sure that, and, and as I explained to them, if I had done that to one of my customers, they would have been upset and if I did that on a regular basis I wouldn't be in business very long so they looked after us um, and only charged us what seemed to be like two hours labor which was fine by me and 
we've got the car back obviously because I showed it to you. So uh, I think what we're going to end up doing is it's always nice to have a car with remote locks that work. So what we're going to do is we are going to contact Rob next door, see if they can install a remote car starter for about 300 bucks and the door locks will work and as a bonus you can start the car in the winter time. So I think that's the route that we're going to take that way whoever buys the car will have power uh, remote locks. So guys that was a little bit long-winded but I felt the need to tell you that to make sure as an educative move to you guys when you take your car to the dealer whether it be to me or to your dealer wherever you're from make sure you always ask them to call you first before they proceed with any repairs because you're going to get surprised one of these days and you're not going to like it so hopefully that story helps you to move forward with your car buying uh, strategies and knowing that if the car dealership that you buy it from has a service department you know some of the things to look for so guys we're going to end this video down below there are four links for you to check out those are four other ways other than watching these videos that you can support my channel and obviously the first one being bonfire.com where you can get your very own old car auto guy merchandise guys I end every video on a positive note and that is say it with me Stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. Love you guys. God bless. Let's do it again in the next video. Stop.